Rome, the centre of the world church, and so mission control for all missionary efforts. In 1878, Janssen presented his plans to the Pope. In Latin, he explained to the head of the church on earth what he intended to do with his missionary centre. Leo XIII gave the young undertaking his blessing. To ensure cooperation with the Vatican authorities, Janssen soon considered it necessary to set up a location in the Eternal City. The growing demand for teachers of philosophy and theology in the missionary centre led him to found a college in Rome. His natural brother took over as its head. On the way back from his first visit to Rome, Janssen stopped off in Brixen. In the seminary, he met someone who was interested in his missionary center, Josef Freinademetz. Together with Ansa, Freinademetz would become one of the first missionaries Janssen would send out into the world. In 1879, they both set out for China. First, Ansa and Freinademetz sailed to Hong Kong to gain experience of China with the apostolic prefect Raimondi. Two years later, Janssen got his first, his own mission area in the south, in the province of Shangtung. The area given up by the Franciscans had seen very little previous missionary activity. Among a population of nine million, and in a region the size of Bavaria, there were only 200 Christians in three villages. There were not yet any churches. On Janssen's suggestion, Ansa was appointed the apostolic vicar, and a short time later, bishop. At the same time, Janssen made him the first provincial superior of China. Even though Janssen sent both support from home, the beginnings were often gruelling and hard. Besides the difficulty of being accepted by the Chinese, it became clear that their missionary activities were taking place in an area affected by great power rivalry. Initially, France had guaranteed the safety of the China mission, but Germany was pushing harder and harder to take over this guarantee for the German missionaries in order to spread its influence in China. The anger of the Chinese towards the foreign powers was growing. In this atmosphere seething with hatred, two missionaries of the Divine Word were murdered. Freinader Metz sent a telegram to Janssen, Henle and Nice murdered. The lines rose to importance in international politics. Kaiser Wilhelm occupied the Kiao Tishu Bay under the pretext of having to protect his fellow countrymen. This would become the starting point for the least German colony in China. As well as the severe political tests, there came internal difficulties. The first bishop of the SVD order, of all people, proved to be more and more of a problem. His fellow brothers in the order suffered under his leadership style and way of life. Janssen tirelessly stepped in as mediator time and time again, attempting an impossible balancing act between China and style. Not until the bishop died and Frenadermetz took over the province did peace return. Although the beginnings in China were marked by trial and tribulation, they soon started to bear fruit. In 1908, the province had over 45,000 new converts and the same number waiting to be baptized. For the 57 SVD fathers, 17 brothers and 30 missionary sisters, it was an amazing missionary achievement. There were 141 churches and chapels. Janssen could be satisfied. <laughs>